The Final Fantasy VII Remake is releasing at the perfect time. Its release is toward the end of the console generation, when the PS4 has its largest player base. It doesn't have to compete with too many other AAA titles, but most importantly, it releases at a time in Square Enix's history when the company and fans truly need it. Final Fantasy has had an identity crisis for over a decade now, and Square Enix's recent entries into the series and adjacent franchises has received deservedly mixed reviews. While Square Enix is looking for a way to move forward, they've rightly decided it to be a perfect time to take a step back to their glory days. I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said this is one of the biggest moments in gaming history this console generation. This demo is the first hands-on experience for millions of fans around the world. Square Enix had to ensure that this was something that could get people excited, and they've succeeded. And all they had to do was let us play the first hour of the game. If this is any indication of the final product, we're in for one of the best entries in modern Final Fantasy history. Before you even take control, you realize how gorgeous this game is. The Unreal Engine has done wonders here, and I think Square Enix should use this instead of their proprietary engine in future. They'll save themselves plenty of production time, and the end result looks fantastic. The cutscenes look wonderful, and they blend directly into the gameplay, which looks just as good. From the intricately detailed character models to the sparkling particle effects, the visuals prove once again that Square's obsession with graphical fidelity pays off. Final Fantasy VII's art design really shines in this version as well, and I'm excited to see how the rest of Midgard looks while playing. This is the first chapter of the game, so the gameplay is tutorialized to get you familiar with the mechanics. Combat felt like a mix between Kingdom Hearts real-time commands and older ATB-based Final Fantasy titles. You start fighting a few basic enemies with your normal attack. You then learn the dodge roll and guard mechanics. With these mechanics alone, you feel a sense of real importance to the movement that the remake introduces. If you're surrounded, you have the option of rolling away or guarding while you decide which enemy to take out. You also have commands that deplete your ATB gauge and you fill this back up by taking and dealing damage. For Cloud, these commands are both stronger attacks that fill up your enemy's stagger meter. Once staggered, the enemy is rendered helpless for a few moments. The first few fights are pretty simple, but then you encounter a dog for the first time. At this point, the game teaches you how to lock on, which shows us just how important this mechanic is. These dogs are fast, and they have a decent health bar. You'll have to decide how you want to prioritize them versus enemies with ranged weapons. Even locked on, it's hard to get them pinned down because they dart across the screen, even in a small space. Combat really starts to open up when you gain control of Barrett as an additional combat character. They make it abundantly clear that each character has a use for particular situations. Cloud for close range swordplay and Barrett for long range gunplay. This reinforces a theme that was constantly proven throughout the demo. This remake puts its newfound mobility to great use. If you can't get close to an enemy, shoot them out of the sky. Switching between characters is easily done with the press of a button and issuing commands for the character you're not playing as is simple as well. It just feels so smooth. Not only does each character have basic attacks, items, and magic, they also each have special character-specific abilities that you activate with the triangle button. For Cloud, this puts him in a special attack stance called Punisher Mode. In Punisher Mode, Cloud deals extra damage at the expense of mobility. He moves much slower, can't guard ranged or magic attacks, and dodge rolling takes him out of this stance. It's great if you're able to roll behind a large enemy, switch to this mode, and hammer out a few attacks before rolling again. Barrett, on the other hand, has a special attack that shoots a heavy projectile when pressing triangle. This takes a while to recharge, but pressing triangle while it's recharging will reduce its downtime at the expense of attacking. With these two characters, you can see how the structure of their special abilities makes them feel wholly unique. You can also imagine that juggling these among all the other characters' abilities requires a high level of focus, which makes the encounters tense and engaging. What I thought was a bit less interesting was the level design. The more I reflect on this, I understand why. You're taking your first steps in a game so large that it's coming out in a staggered release across three Blu-ray discs. I just hope that the game opens up tremendously because traversing through the first chapter reminded me of Final Fantasy XIII's linear progression, which made that title increasingly tedious. The opening chapter consists of hallways, staircases, and ladders, which offer very little in terms of exploration. But I mean, you're in the Maku reactor, so I can't imagine the rest of the game will be like this. 
Another small issue that was more annoying than I expected was the lock-on. The camera would fight against you if you were locked onto an enemy that was moving around too quickly. It was hard to determine who you were locked onto in the heat of a battle with several enemies. And it was difficult to move the camera around without switching the enemy that you were locked onto, since you move the right stick to switch lock-on targets, but that also is what you do to move the camera. It just didn't feel intuitive, especially when you were managing multiple characters, attack commands, attack modes, items, magic, ATB, MP, HP, stagger, movement and guarding. You know, you get the picture. It's kind of a nitpick, but given how polished the combat felt overall, this stood out more than it should have. Additionally, some of the dialogue felt strange. It's unclear whether it's the voice acting, direction, writing, or just the fact that this game is trying to stay true to the 23-year-old original, but sometimes things felt a little bit too campy. Marco is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! Do I look okay? Help a girl out, would you? My hero! Of course, this is a remake of an old game, and I'm sure I'll get used to it, but it was jarring to me at first. But any reservations I had were completely washed away once I encountered the first boss of the game. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that a Final Fantasy tutorial boss was fun, challenging, and memorable? If you can't immediately answer this question, you haven't played this demo yet. The battle against the Scorpion Sentinel is a frantic engagement where you'll have to think on your feet, use all of the mechanics you've learned so far, and adapt to new information as the fight progresses. During the fight, you discover that the Scorpion Sentinel has a weakness to thunder, and you realize that Barret has thunder magic. However, the Scorpion raises a shield that basically negates your attack damage. But if you get behind it, you can target a weak spot that you can destroy to drop that shield. Getting behind the Scorpion may be difficult because it will launch AoE attacks that you have to dodge away from to avoid, so you can't just spam attacks. The Scorpion also jumps onto the wall out of Cloud's reach, and it will launch missiles at you from a safe distance. But Barrett can still target the Scorpion with his gun. At some point, the Scorpion will move again and launch a powerful attack at you, but you can move behind cover to get away from this beam. As your health whittles down, you'll have to use a potion or cure magic, but healing also requires ATB, so you might be screwed if you're too offensive. Of course, you can have your characters use their ATB to heal each other if one of them currently can't heal themselves. So at all times, you have to manage who's attacking, who's healing, who has ATB, who has the right magic for type effectiveness, are your characters in the area of effect, which character can reach the enemy, where is the enemy going, does the enemy have a shield, how do you get rid of that shield? When do you guard? When do you dodge? And it's just so consistently engaging. It's just stressful enough to get your heart pumping without feeling like you're micromanaging. In short, it's tough and it's fun. It's a big departure from Final Fantasy XV where you had to hold one button to attack. This fight requires strategy. If you remember back to Final Fantasy XIII, there wasn't much strategy to consider in the fights until you started battling some of the Eidolons and Paradigm Shifting. What I'm saying here is that Final Fantasy VII Remake is HD Final Fantasy, but with great combat right out of the gate, which honestly is something we haven't seen until now. And this is the first boss of the game, but I felt like I barely made it out alive. It's probably the best tutorial boss I've played in video games ever. I can only imagine how great later bosses will be once you have more characters, more abilities, and more enemy configurations to consider. My hopes for the game moving forward are that it opens up with more options for exploration, and it deepens its dive into the characters and their relationships. Keeping the original game in mind, it's almost certain that the game will do both. Hopefully, things like the lock-on and camera get improved prior to release or with a patch. And I hope the mini-games are fun as well. I'm most looking forward to how summons and other gameplay nuances enrich the experience. Overall, this was a fantastic demo, and it feels good to say that the Final Fantasy VII Remake starts off strong. 
If it naturally progresses with deeper combat and story, this will be the Final Fantasy game that proves that the series can still deliver on all fronts. And it couldn't have come at a better time.